is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Basil Chapman here on this second day of November, Thursday. We're looking at the Dow futures up 139, and we're looking at the time of 8:06 a.m. in the morning. This will be replayed at uh, eight at 10 o'clock, my usual time, Eastern time. So this is really important. Why? Because the takeoff that we had from the Friday low. I'm looking at the futures here. The Friday low. This is a, this is a continuous contract so the price can change but right now the price is 32,409 on the 27th we had that at open that sharp open and we kept rallying at a beautiful session on Monday Tuesday followed through Wednesday followed through and today we've got another follow through this is called the gray a in the Chapman wave methodology tomorrow's technical Friday I'll go through some of this uh, in my 10 o'clock show now, what we're looking at is that the look at the nice V-shaped pattern here in the unbalanced volume. Uh, that was the bottom on Thursday, and that was the bottom right there. It also gave you the bottom in the relative strength, same day. It's very unusual uh, to get both of these that give you the exact ictus, the little turning point. Uh, the, the relative strength um, is is important because it's been rising very nicely with the price. The MACD cross positive. This is the MACD here, the moving average convergence divergence, and the nine period moving average is still way underneath the 14 period moving average. I had said earlier that to get this in the Dow, this is the Dow contract itself with the closing prices yesterday, so it's not showing the price right now. The futures does that. This is still a great leg A. Eh? I did not draw this line in. Normally I do, but for some reason I didn't. So the first line that we'll be looking at of resistance, Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone is up in this 32,500 area. That's the cash I'm talking about. And most importantly, the reason why I want to show you, look at the distance between the, the pink nine period moving average and the 14. It crossed over once positive just as we made that reversal in the arch pattern. And now we're making a potential V-shaped pattern. So it's, it's important that this rally holds. And when you take off like this after a low that's been made, that's quite important, as we did back on the about the 6th or so of October, you, it's, it's really good to have strong candles. And then you have your peak A after a few candles. And, but very quickly, you want to make leg B. And that's the test, how much you can, how how many bars, that's days in this case, can the price keep going higher towards the first big resistance? And that will be the 200 period moving average of 32,787 on the Dow itself. Let's do the same thing with the S&P. So the E-mini right now, so if I'm, I'm doing this at this at this particular time, 8, uh, 8.09 a.m. Eastern time, that'll be 10.09 Eastern time when this is replayed. And everything pertains now in the ES, I had already drawn in all these different uh, levels of this is the Chapman Wave repellent zone. Look how the price kept getting repelled there. Can it go up now? The question has to be, and a lot of people will, because they still got the mentality of going into last week's low, short, short, short. This is the opposite. Now what you want to do is to be looking at buy now. I did say that I was looking at this as a low, not the low. The reason why I'm saying that is that the volatility index, VIX, and I should mention that the E-mini is up 28 points right now at 42.84. We just took out all the resistance in the uh, in the near-term contract in the uh, intraday contracts. So look at this. This is the VIX index pulling back sharply down 55 cents at 816.32. What's really important about this is that the actual high of 23.08 was on the 23rd of October. We got the turnaround in the general market on Friday. And my, what I discussed was, I thought that it was really important that the S&P, let's go to the stay with the VIX, that the VIX index makes a high up in the high 20s, maybe even the low 30s, 
for the, the actual, the, the big turnaround. Now, what I'm calling this at this particular point, and I'll go back to the E-mini right now, I'm calling this a kind of internal low, and I'm waiting for the residual low. It's like an earthquake and an aftershock. The earthquake could be really, whatever, seven on the, or eight on the Richter scale, but then you can have either very little in the way of aftershock or aftershocks or a lot, an intense, even sometimes worse than the earthquake, uh, the impact of the aftershocks, or you could have just a, just a reasonable one. I'm thinking that this is the internal low, and that going back to the, let's go to the S&P cash list for the moment, because it's a little easier to talk about something that is a fixed price, that the low of 41, oh, was it? 4103 or something? Yeah, 4103.78. I may as well just type it in here. 4103.78 of Friday. My suspicion is that how we come back, it depends on the news that's, that's going to be coming out over the next week. We've already had advanced micro devices gave us a chance to see whether or not, and we are still short the SMHs from two points of the all-time high, but I intend for subscribers to have trading positions on any any dip that comes, because I think there's enough evidence from advanced micro devices. I'll do this while I'm talking about it. AMD having, a, it was really shaky after the news, uh, its earnings. Um, it wasn't bad, it was just, but it was down about two points and it was up and it was down and then it closed up huge. It was uh, tootling along in the 98 level and it closes at 108 and right now it's at 108.25 of 21 cents. This might've been a little excessive, but that's excellent action. And that really helped the SMHs. So the SMHs had this beautiful, and I'll talk about this tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll make it like a little webinar that we'll have, a live one for everyone listening. How you can look at look at the parallel incline and decline and, and look at the beautiful one-to-one -one measurements. And this is called the Chapman Wave uh, falling axe, inverted falling axe, and the dreaded H pattern inverted falling axe and the, and the dreaded age pattern. And, and within that, you've got your inside track and your down channel, and it goes right to the resistance. It stops right there and it comes back. It stopped right there. And I, I tooted along with this. I really was looking at it because it was on the 200 period exponential moving average, which it hasn't visited for months. And I thought this is gonna be interesting because if there is a balance I need the SMHs, which were very weak, to be rallying to say that this particular move has some legs to it rather than just a bounce. Can it be a move that takes you to 150? We were short from 159, just over 159. 161.17 was the uh, all-time high on July the 31st. Immediately after that, we went short. Now the issue is, Am I going to switch that? Is this the time? I don't think all the news is out, and therefore I'm saying I suspect that we're going to have some kind of... So the internal low is where the technicals give you all the indications that that's a pretty serious low. The emotional low, which I call the residual low, and we see the same thing at the highs. I'll just show this chart very briefly where I, I do this for the Chapman Wave. This is on the Dow, where I do this for the... Uh, the upside as well. Internal high, residual high, I draw these rectangles. So I've got internal low. Where will the residual low be if it's going to be? And that's going to be very important. So I'll be back in a moment about the chapter, Thursday edition, early edition at 8.15 a.m. Here we are. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstad breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Org joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. Call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome to the Radical Capital Early Edition. The Alpha is up 175. Entity futures are up um, uh, 30. Let me just show you something. I'm talking about those SMHs how I needed to see them rally sharply. I didn't care how, why, or where. And I know there's a lot of talk about that's the end of NVIDIA. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But uh, but there are other companies that are coming in, especially with AI, and they are, uh, NVIDIA isn't prepared in the same way that some of these smaller companies are. I don't know, I, this is all beyond me, but it's really fascinating because this is a really nice move. And even early this morning, NVIDIA is up eight at 431. And the big thing for me was, do I cover the entire position for the uh, short that we have all the way from uh, just above the SMHS high? And I'm saying, I don't think we're ready, but I might not get the low that was made the other day. We'll be, we'll be uh, watching that closely. Now, just talking about um, all these different levels and the, uh, all these different patterns, I, I, I mentioned uh, someone in the den who listens to a lot of both jazz and classical music. Uh, <laughs> But the other night, perchance, because uh, I guess on Google, whatever you do, they, it, it knows what you like, and it just shows you stuff in the category. Suddenly, there was this thing that said, uh, Chopin, jazz, question mark? And I said, yes. And there was this young woman, she was explaining about a, a Chopin piece, a ballad, I think it was, a piece I, I, I actually know quite well. Um, I, I, of course, I never remember what, what the uh, number of the composition is, but... but I know the pieces. And uh, she was going through it in jazz, contemporary jazz chord analysis. And there was just one little bit that was changed that she would change in terms of the analysis, but everything else fitted perfectly. And I also mentioned uh, to um, our Denno that I went once to a, a new, I was a, a, a master's degree candidate, um, graduate from a new conservatory of music, clarinet and uh, minor composition. Uh, so I went uh, to, to one of the, uh, when I was on the alumni council, I went to one of the uh, events and was someone who, uh, who had done a, sh a Fibonacci analysis. I didn't even know that they'd done it. It was just a surprise thing that I went to, and there she was, talking about the Fibonacci relationship to all these different composers, going back to the Renaissance period, Chopin, Beethoven, uh, Mozart, Haydn, they all, they all included some Fibonacci in the book, and she had it just unbelievable to see these ratios as 
the piece was being played and you saw the graph. It's absolutely fabulous. Okay, so back to the market. So what am I anticipating? So with that said, let me just show you the QQQ. Uh, did I just move away? That was in video. We didn't get it on the button. Video was done now. Uh, QQQ. Point this way. So look at this nice move up. It was kind of stalling and it held the 200 period moving average. Do you need the 200 period moving average? Absolutely not. You had a 387. But when you come back to 345, you better be watching that 200 period moving average because it was the magnet line before, back in February and March of this year before it broke out. And I think it's going to be some kind of a magnet line right in this time frame. That's not to say we have to go break under it or anything like that. I'm just saying price could be attracted towards it. And if you look at the NQ, slightly different chart. Um, but we're also moving away. The nine period moving average is still pink. It hasn't changed to green. It could still do that. But my suspicion is that this trend line right here, I'm just going to expand, it extended right there. That should, in fact, become some kind of a resistance level. All right. So with that said, I want you to go to uh, the gold because gold is up. It's up nine at 1996. It made this peak one C, C1, C2. Tomorrow I'll discuss that if I remember. This is the alternate count to the Chevrolet peak C going to a D. All the technicals looked really like they needed. They were ready to pop to the D, but it didn't. So I call it the C1 and the Phantom Peak C2 ready for a deeper pullback, but it doesn't have to. Often you get the retest and you break to a D and then you pull back. So this is good action in gold. Uh, it's holding very well, but look at this. The GDX is up 29 cents today, 28.40. This is not a great pattern. I think over a period of time, if gold remains here, there's no way that gold stocks aren't going to try to get back to the higher positions that they were at just a week or two ago when this whole uh, war broke out. So we're watching that, looking at the SI, which is silver. Look, there's the silver trading at um, 23.13. This is current price at 30, up 35 cents. Just kind of stuck, stuck in that 200 period moving average. When it breaks and gets to, if it breaks and gets to the 24.53 level up there, I'll say different kettle of fish, if that's the right expression. Uh, I should mix, mix my metaphors, as the late Dave White used to do so well. And I'm just going to move my trend line here because that would be the higher trend line. It's no more a channel. It's now a trend line, an expanding wedge, and we'll see what happens there. Uh, looking at uh, high-grade copper, high-grade copper, look at this, high-grade copper. This is now pre-open, and in about seven minutes, we're going to get some kind of economic news. We'll see if that affects if the market says, hey, we're done with all that. The Fed said, we're okay. We can keep going, and we'll be watching this. So the high-grade copper made a peak A, peak B, a peak C. It still doesn't look very good in the uh, weekly chart, but it is having higher highs and higher lows in the very short term. So if copper at 3.66, is able to finally push back into this whole area of 3.78 to 3.82, I think that'll be a good sign for the market. But, it, but right now it's lagging. I wanted to go to crude oil. Crude oil is trading uh, down. Oh, no, it's up 62 cents at 81.06. It's not a great pattern. This is a dreaded H pattern, like an inverted V. Uh, how it tests, it, it looks to me like that 79 level is the 200 period moving average magnet line. It'll only start being attracted to it if it closes under 80. If it closes under 80, immediately the 79 is, is in the picture. But if it suddenly pops to 82, it moving away, it means that it's, it's still a, a propellant line rather than a, an attractor. Okay, but if you're looking at the weekly chart, it's suggesting that it's having a tough time, crude oil, uh, natural gas, let's see where it is. We did not go back into the UND because I was a little concerned that the move that we saw three days ago didn't break to a leg B, and then yesterday we pulled back. So this is still a work in progress. We haven't gone back into the UNG, um, but it's a work in progress, and I do think that it's making higher highs and higher lows, but it's very, it needs a catalyst, and that could be if there is like two weeks of really cold weather. I think we'll start to see that. I won't, don't want to run out of time now. I want to finish the um, the bonds. Look, so the bonds had a bit of a relief uh, from the Fed. And all of a sudden, peak A, we're in leg B. And I haven't got any a buy signal yet. It's very close, actually, to a buy signal. 
Um, but the nine period moving hash average hasn't crossed positive over the 14. The MACD is looking much, much better. Stochastic's rallying nicely, not great, but nicely at 41%. On balance volume is good. And this is a very positive sign. That's the reason why I think that this is not, I know a lot of people are now looking to short, and I had said uh, the reason why we didn't immediately on Monday at the open uh, uh, grab a, a, a trading position in the Dow. Instead, I said, I, I want to go for um, a particular stock that is in the Dow, that is in the same price range instead of uh, 30s or the diamonds to get back in or even the UDOW, which is usually what we would grab the three times long. I wanted this particular stock and it meant all our need. So we got into the stock and it's in that range and it's had a fabulous move over the last couple of days. So that's the way we're trading this. And I'll be back in a moment after 8.30, whatever the economic news is at 8.30, we'll see what happens. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Claims, oh, so it's jobless claims and the, 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 the S&P uh, futures spiked up a little bit. They're at 3225. They're spiking up a little bit more, spiking up even a little bit more. Okay, so that's good news. So I don't think we're going to get the, the pullback. Uh, if, if you missed entries over the last couple of days, you're going to have to have, they're probably going to be higher than you expected to get into positions that you've missed. Uh, that's just what happens sometimes when you have a very sharp turnaround. So a couple of things. Oh, yeah, I just, um, yeah, Keith Jarrett, um, when I've listened to Keith Jarrett, I've, I've heard him play Bach, and he does it extremely well. Yes, a, a good point. And 
we're just talking about different uh, uh, musical aspects here. But really what we're looking at, um, and a nice comment here by uh, uh, one of our denners, Z, um, saying, and basically, and this is what we've spoken about for years, and that's why TFNN I've always found is just so many people tell me when I meet them that they've learned so much from the hosts of TFNN. And one of the reasons is, I've always said, I remember when I used to teach, uh, if a student was playing, say, a Brahms clarinet uh, sonata, and then they played, and then they'd look at me as if to say, so well, what do you think? Then I'd look, I'd, the same Bassett or Hound, look, I'd give them, I'd look them back at them, and they'd look at me, and I'd look at them, and, look, and then they said, huh, what, what? I'd say, wait a minute, you're a musician. You're, you're learning, the whole idea of being a musician is to interpret piece, pieces and to tell me your story. So why are you looking at me? It's your story. Tell me if you felt it was successful. And that's the same with trading. If every day you do a particular thing and it works for you a majority of the time, it doesn't have to be 100%, it doesn't have to be 75, but really a majority of the time you feel so comfortable that you could do it. And if it doesn't go right, you know exactly what to do. That's what you want. And when you learn something from someone else, it has to become yours. In other words, um, in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're looking at recounting the troughs and the peaks. That's the core of it. Uppercase on the way up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's never an H on the way down, A, B, C, D, F, G, lowercase. But the most important thing about it is that how you handle it, how you, how you use these techniques, how you use the bar symmetry. I must have at least 12, 13, 14 different, actually it's probably way more than that, I've never counted, the different techniques that I've developed over the years. And I, some of them are, there's no one in the world that I've ever known that actually came up with the Chapman Wave technique of counting, assessing peaks. Uh, peak D is your objective. At peak D, other, thing, other things can happen. Uh, and that's the way, that's just important. So let me just go back here to what we're looking at. So this is a very, the, I would say this is a session that's going to be in terms of chart formations. You've got the re relief of the TNX, and we spoke about this last week, the TNX have already made a peak D in the Chapman methodology at 49.97 on the 23rd. And then it had this arch formation that looks like a dreaded H. Maybe tomorrow I'll show many of these patterns. Uh, dreaded H, dreaded H. That's the pattern where it comes straight down, tries to rally, and then fails at a peak A or a B, and then takes out the left side low. It can have more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside if it fails. Well, this is the pattern, straight line down, arches over red, because if it takes it out, green on the upside, where it goes and makes a reverse Y pattern and takes out the left side high. That's very positive. So you've got three uh, directional moves, straight up, straight down, cup formation where you go from one place down and back to that place. What happens when you return? In other words, it's green could be a V or a, a cup formation or an inverted V, an arch formation. And when you join two straight down and then you make the other, this arch formation failing and taking it out, that is a serious thing. There, is, That is not just, this is not that I was eating breakfast and I sneezed and this is a little spot right there. This is, a, this is the note. This is the, this is the price, 46.80 down a dollar. So when we're looking at this, I think this is really important because it's telling us that the TLT for the first time is able to break uh, better to look at the bonds themselves as a 30-year bond. Look at this, better to break to the upside, and that's giving the market itself a little bit of relief. And that's the reason why, because the tech sector, XLK, the tech sector hit the 200 period, oh, I forgot to put the E in. Uh, right there's an E. It's actually an E slash A, trough A, trough B, trough, oh, great, this is even better. This is a trough A right there, lowercase on the way down, trough B right there, lower. You see that's a little, that's a little trough. There's another trough C, and there's your D. So the second time for a D, you're getting a rally. But this time, what we're looking at is that the, the length of the move after one, two, three, four bars after the low, you get the low, one, two, three, four, it took five, six, it was the sixth, seventh bar where you got the big move up. So this is showing that the, this B minus right here, if that gets taken out, 
this is going to be a much stronger move to the upside. So I'm liking what I see. Now, how do we go from how, how what would take the VIX index uh, to the high 20s, a low 30s, when all of a sudden we've got the Fed kind of on our side, you've got uh, yields coming down for the first time, you've got the uh, uh, three aspects that I think are really important. You've got the tech sector, let's go back to the XLK, the tech, the tech sector finally getting a little bit of a breather after being, oh, this is the XLK, the XLK. Um, so everything I said didn't apply to the bonds, this applied to the XLK. This is very nice, nice strong move. You did your one to one to the downside, but the nine period moving average is still negative. So this has to be a move that really takes it into the 170s or the 168, 92 right now. And the reason why I liked uh, the, the, the position that we got, uh, well, I was asked about it yesterday and I did an analysis of it, so I may as well talk about it. I usually don't like to talk about it the day we actually get it. <clears throat> and that's Microsoft. So here's Microsoft and it encompasses so many things. Look. Um, it had good earnings and then it pulled back really sharp. And we were fortunate enough to get it. We got long at the 338 level and it's trading pre market at 349. I did say yesterday to take a little, just a tad off uh, on a balance. And to this morning, I said, when I sent out my, my, my uh, newsletter, I said, let's, let's take a tad off right as it is right now. And I thought it was in the 349 area. And, and the reason why I do that is I've learned that if you don't take money off, um, as it moves in your favor, just has to be a little off. I mean, you, in other words, you're rewarding yourself for getting into the right position. And then you got your core position. And we're still holding a core position in the diamonds for the same reason. From way back in March of 2020, we still have a position in the diamonds. That was, that was under 211, and it's trading right now 334. Uh, we have a position in the uh, diamonds as well as the SDOW, the three times long, from the October low of last year. And I, I just found that it builds, yeah, you're not going to make the same big money if you, as if you had held and even doubled up your position. That's for, that's for traders who are working online together. But I don't, I haven't used it as some people are lucky enough if they get my 8 o'clock or 8, 8.30 a newsletter and they're there to be able to put the trade on and then they come back to whatever it is. So I have some people who are, are some managers are looking at this and say, hey, we love the fact that you guys direct to do that's brilliant. So we'll see what happens. Balance the PLTR as we go to the break. Tigers. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So, a couple of things here that I So I'm always looking at the Wave methodology for a buy signal to be upgraded to a buy mode. So I put this E slash B as an alternate count, but the line period moving average never turned pink. This is beautiful. We'll look at the dollar in a minute to see if it's going to turn pink and give us a sense that the dollar finally pulls back. But look at this. We finally got to the D in the one minute chart. We're in a leg E in the five minute chart, and we're in a leg F, but there could be an alternate count because it could be a Chapman Wave instant restart. I'll circle it right there. So if we're trading uh, when this show comes back on, later, and this is at 8.42 right now, if it's 10.42 and the E-mini uh, trading up 36 is still up more than, say, 20 points, we could recycle and for the day, we could have a brand new uh, four peaks higher in the 10-minute chart. That means that you go to a G, F slash B, G slash C, and then another D because you can't get an H. So this is going to be very important. If the key support now on the shorter term is 42.80 on the two in the one minute chart, 42.64 on the five five minute chart. So I just want to get that out now. So what I was saying about these techniques and why people like love listening to the different hosts here at TFN is at, when I was telling you about the student playing Brahms and then looking at me, it has to be your story. So when I tell them, you know, you need a little bit more. Uh, acceleration in this particular phrase, or you need a little bit more, um, let's see, articulation of your staccato notes. Da, 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 da. Um, there's a little passage I'm just thinking right now, the last movement of one of the Brahms sonatas starts off. Da, 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 da. So when you, when, when you get that short little bouncy note, the two notes together, you want to be able to really, it can't just be fluffy, it's got to be really strong. It's like almost like a march. So that's the technique that I was explaining, but it becomes his technique when he's playing it. It's not mine anymore. And it's the same thing here. There are people using these. Uh, you know, I've done webinars on the 914. Where I, I think I'd love to do one again. I just don't know how many people would be interested in it. But isn't it incredible? I mean, how many days do I say there's a chance of a two-click session? I'll be working really hard at that. I'm getting closer and closer to the defining what you would look for on a two session, a potential two session session um, that's click in the morning and then just forget about it. And then three o'clock in the afternoon, you come back and, and you're still looking at the same technique, to get, holding you in, in a buy position or in a sell position. And then you click and you say, I'm done. Or you can have two clicks. You make a mistake early on and then everything comes back and you can have another one click and you wait and wait and wait for that final click to get out. I mean, that's fantastic. You know, the best trades are the ones that you don't have to go in and out, in and out, in and out, because your mind is set, everything is locked in, and all you're looking at is where's your exit point. That's the only thing. Uh, you don't have to do that over and over. Um, so, okay. So with that said, 
Um, that's what I'd be looking for. And now we have to look at the other aspects that I was talking about. So Palantir question came in. Nice earnings. It's up to 68 right now. Where should it go? Well, the chart actually was looking great when it was getting to that peak D. And then it failed. But then the 9 period moving average went negative and went S. So you have to wait for, the, um, for it to turn green again for that technical, uh, I'd say, confirmation. And then the MACD has to turn up, stochastic at 8, 5%. So I'd say the pattern I was looking at was the weekly chart that made the H pattern, held the left side low, and then that should have turned into a cup formation. And then it failed. So this is back to a right shoulder failure, this dreaded H pattern. It has a second arch formation, a bigger one. I'll draw it in like this. So I just look at this and say, if you're in the long position, the time, first of all, when you're in something, and I, I'm not talking about, I, I don't know the positions, but let's just say you got in and you got in at 1780 and it bounces to 1835 and now it's trading at 1492. What I've learned over the years is that if it gets back to or just really close because you were wrong, it's not like you had a plan to say, if this thing keeps going down, I'm buying it because my longer term outlook says it's going to 35. Uh, I'm buying it in the 20s. I'm buying it in the 12s. I'm just buying. That's different. I would not put bad money to good money. I would say, you know what? And this is what I've done over the years, and I've found it really is useful. I, I, no one's ever said to me they're getting upset because I have very tight stops. Because I know when it works, um, we, we more than more than make up little mistakes like that. But the most important thing is that if this gets back to your entry level, I, w I, I do two things. One is I get out immediately, and then I say I've now got a fresh position because I like it. I'm getting the fresh position, and here's the stop. I never took a stop before, but now I'm going to have a stop. I don't care what happens. If it pulls back from my entry point X number of whatever it is, percent or points, I am out because you don't want to go through that again. That's number one. Number two is I would immediately, if it gets close, I would put in a physical stop. In other words, I don't take it. I put it in. I say it's gone back to um, 1780. I got in at 18. Uh, at 1780. I'm either getting out, and I say, okay, I just really want to get out. I like the action. It's improving. The technicals are now, the right side is all improving. In this case, it's going to take a lot for the right side to improve. But I'm now going to put a stop in at least on part of the position. But my, my advice is take a little bit off. You're not going to make as much if it goes where you wanted it to originally, but you're not going to lose the same way. And then you have to put in the stop. But th at that point, you just, the rule is, you eat, for me, the rule is get out, get back in with a new position. If you still love it, that's different. It's a new position. Your mindset is completely different. So that's the way I would look at it. So I'm going to say I want to see what it does. Today's Thursday, Monday at, the, at my usual time, at 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Let's look at it again. And if it's holding beautifully, it's at 1763 right now. If it's holding beautifully over 1650. I'll say that is good because now you can see the 9 period moving average is getting closer to turning up or crossing positive. The MACD is improving, but it still needs a lot of work. The weekly charts are saying it didn't, hasn't gone to an S yet in the 914. So that's the reason why I'm saying to you, I would still keep the position, but I'd, have, I'd manage it completely differently. Okay, I hope that helped you. Next question came in. I'm just needing to look here. Yeah, this is the early edition, so people don't know I'm on. So the question is, hi, Basil. I don't believe the VIX has played out to show bottom is in yet. Do you agree? You know, there are so many changes. And before I get there, let me just, I don't want to finish the show with actually doing the, the dollar because we are still on the dollar. I haven't taken anything, anything more off the dollar yet. But we, we're along from 2018. That's a different position altogether. Um, so, yeah, this is a sharp move down, down 69 pips at 105.98 after being repelled to the Chapman Wave inside track and down channel, the mini down channel resistance. Um, I'm watching this really closely. So I'm going to get to the VIX because I'm putting the two together. If the dollar starts to trade and in over into, into next week, sometime next week, under 105.30. Under one, actually, I'm going to say closes under 105.30 next week. At the same time, now I normally would say the gold.
1950s where altogether he is the token of geopolitical fear and the dollar is a uh, token of geo financial fear and at that point it's not we're not in that fear category just yet in the banking sector so i'm saying if the dollar is down at 1505 you've got to be really careful the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy sell recommendations the gold report new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk subscribe to tom o'brien's gold report newsletter now at tfnn.com Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, just before I forget, uh, uh, Sandy Soup will be uh, sitting in for Tommy O'Brien for the next hour. Should be a great show, of course. Um, so let me just, Euro dollar has to try to get above the 1.07 200 period moving average that's at 106.65. Nice move up today. The technicals are starting to improve and the, the nine period moving average is green. The uh, USD, JPY, um, it, oh, how does that appear? Um, is pulling back from a peak D. There you are. So I said yesterday we look at, we're looking at a peak D in the USD, JPY. It's up in, it's done exactly what we were talking about for the travel wave symmetry and going back to the all-important high that was made back in October of uh, 2022 of 151.94. One, uh, and here it is at 150.97. Um, so, yeah, I think that there's a chance that we have a, a bit of a dip. I don't have anything technically negative there. So that's why I'm saying I think this is a really uh, just a very big relief rally, but it's the start of something. And it's a start of something in different areas that might not have to retest their lows. And that's going to be important. So back to the VIX. I, you know, things have changed so much 
that maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm looking historically, but there's a new history. Who knows? But I would expect that that swimming pool level will be taken out for the next big low. But I'm not saying that it has to happen today. I'm saying that's what I'll be waiting for. That's the reason why we've gone long, and that's the reason why we have a, 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 a great surrogate uh, for the diamonds in the in the issue in Microsoft because it's combining the tech sector that's oversold. It's combining the Dow itself because it's there. It's combining the S&P, the QQQ. So that's what I'm looking at. So tomorrow there's a lot of work that I need to do that I couldn't get to today. Uh, just a couple of things. Let me just see real quickly. Uh, yeah, but so the TLT, the TLT, I just typed it into the den by mistake. TLT, there it is. TLT is up $1.81 and 86.91. That is what you'd be waiting for. But that pink time frame moving as it has a long way to go to turn green. But this is really the start of some internal low. And maybe with the wizard of low, um, higher, or whatever it is, I'm taking this very seriously. I think there's no legs. Have a wonderful check out for Open Call, my daily newsletter. Stay tuned for the time.